When I was in college, I know. I What's the new girl? 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 What's the new
Try not to re, uh, tread down the path of what was previously discussed. I'm just going to do a little history, though. After the 2000 presidential election, of much concern and note of a lot of people in America, uh, there was a convened uh, Carter Baker Commission, uh, which actually resulted in uh, the Help America Vote Act and the changes of federal law. One of their recommendations was that uh, that uh, people should prove who they are by the use of a, a photo identification, and that was part of that commission's understanding. So, so a lot of the impetus goes back to 2000 and the aftermath of 2000. Um, in uh, the, U the U.S. Supreme Court, in the case of um, uh, Crawford versus Marion County, uh, ruled uh, that uh, a uh, that there is uh, that the U.S. Constitution. Uh, supports the use of uh, photo identification uh, in the, and as a requirement of voting and uh, specifically uh, in an opinion that um, uh, in that opinion they, they looked at HAVA, they looked at the National Voter Registration Act uh, and recognizing uh, photo ID in, in those studies um, and uh, the, the, the pertinent discussion in there was that the United States that were in the United States where 40 million people both move each year, 40 million move in urban areas where some people are not even known by their by their neighbors. That uh, the electoral system uh, cannot inspire public confidence if no safeguards exist to deter or detect fraud or to confirm the identity of voters. Uh, voter identification currently uh, currently are needed to board planes in the federal. Uh, buildings and cash a check. Voting is equally as important, um, and and so uh, clearly federal law allows that. Uh, we have a Missouri decision, a Missouri Supreme Court in 2006, and uh, that is a Weinshack decision which rejected photo ID under the Missouri Constitution, and that hence is the reason for a uh, an HJR uh, to submit to voters to change the law. Uh, I certainly can answer specific questions about uh, about the uh, about the, the need. If you, if you if you are interested, I have certainly some examples of, of, of issues of, of fraud, which uh, this would help. Um, most importantly, I want to conclude by saying that uh, numerous studies, including the Heritage Foundation, uh, University of Missouri professor, University of Delaware, University of Nebraska, and most recently. Uh, results from uh, Texas uh, and their implementation of photo ID have uh, constantly established that 
uh, photo identification uh, does not depress voter turnout. Specifically, in uh, in the minority community, uh, there's certainly been no indication based upon scientific studies of this and and uh, reporting throughout that uh, that uh, that uh, that reasonable requirement to prove who you are is is uh, is not. Uh, certainly not designed and certainly doesn't result in voter suppression. Certainly be glad to answer any questions and um, thank you. Okay, thank you Mr. Cox. Any questions of the committee? Ms. Newman. To inquire Mr. Ch uh, Ms. Chair? Yes. Uh, good afternoon representative. We've been talking about this for you know eight years, um, probably every year that you've been here. And uh, not, not not exactly. I did not file this. Missed one year. That's right. There was a year off there. One the year we did here. bring this up, but now now it's been back full steam, and of course we're seeing it across the country too. Uh, I would like to keep this based on the your constitutional amendment. I mean, we we talked yesterday about um, the actual bill and and the reasons behind it, but I think. Um, it is wise, and I think our chairwoman would like us to stick to actually the constitutional amendment and why you think that we need to uh, change our constitution uh, to allow this. And I'm sure that you know, um, and hopefully we have a chance to read the 2006 uh, decision by our state Supreme Court, um, that our state constitution is much stronger than many others in terms of voting rights. And I'm hoping that you know too that our, our uh, state constitution has never been changed in terms of voting rights from the, from the original conception back in the 1800s. We have never altered that. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we talk about the constitution, but, you know, on the floor in committee and how we revere the founders, and yet I believe we should also revere the founders of our state constitution. Um, is, is there a question here? I mean, I, yes, I, I do remember the I guess I'll be asking you a question. Um, just please be patient. And do you have a reason, I mean, besides going into what we talked about in terms of voter ID yesterday, in terms of the bill, why um, or do you believe that the our state Supreme Court justices gave us the wrong decision on voter ID? Uh, well, they get to decide, so I guess it's not the wrong decision. I, I don't think it was a very good decision. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I, along with 80 to 85 percent of the public, believe that a reasonable requirement of photo identification is not a burden upon voting. Uh, the Wycheck decision, read it carefully, uh, and, and interpret it under the meaning, and that they describe a burden placed upon voters to obtain a photo ID, you know, whatever is necessary in order to do that. Uh, and, and it seemed to be that any burden at all was a violation of Missouri's Constitution, which I think that the failure here of that particular opinion is that that there are uh, voting by necessity includes uh, the voters to to do things uh, and things that actually might cost you money to do for example you might have to get on mass transit or, or start up your car and drive to the voting polls under their argument uh, any any kind of cost for the voters uh, under their determination of the Missouri Constitution was illegal. And, and, uh, I mean, and can that, you expand on that in terms of what the cost? Because I don't believe that their decision actually no, they didn't was talking mention about that. getting no, on no, public said, transportation. Said, no, you're right. It said every, anything, any burden placed upon voters is unconstitutional. And I'm saying that a voter by definition who votes it, it, it has has a burden. I so mean, you we, disagree with it. So because of you know you're you know, filing this constitutional amendment, you're saying you disagree with with their decision. Well, certainly, it was a terrible decision. But but we get to put it right before the voters and let them decide. Exactly. I mean that's that's the wonderful thing about change America. Change our constitution, which again has never been changed in terms of voting rights. Is there a question? <laughs> and uh, excuse me, Is representative. There a question there? If, excuse me, representative. I mean you're just speaking. And, uh, I mean excuse I excuse me, representative. Okay, if you don't have questions... I have not. a question for you, and I pr would prefer that you didn't interrupt me. The question I was asking you is you feel the need to change our Constitution, to change someone's right to vote, and to do that now, because we do have that Supreme Court decision in 2006, we would have to put it to the vote of the people. So to put it to the vote of the people, do you feel like that is a light thing that we should be doing when we're talking about someone's right to vote? I'm asking that Missouri come in line with the U.S. Constitution in regard to... To reduce our... Well, could you let me finish my statement? 
please, and not interrupt me. The, uh, I think that the, Missouri, the U.S. Supreme Court made the right decision, recognizing that there is fraud in connection with voting. That, that, is a, that it, we are all cheated if somebody cheats. Our vote is diminished. It's like watering the uh, you know, hole and, and reducing our effective, our effect by, by someone voting who has no right to do it. And I just ask that we be given an opportunity for the voters of the state of Missouri to bring their law consistent with federal law. With, with the U.S. Constitution. Well, we're not talking about the law. We're actually talking about the, the Constitution. The U.S. Constitution. The Constitution. Correct. And I think we have to be very, very clear here for, for this hearing that we're not talking about the U.S. Constitution. We're talking about the Missouri State Constitution, which right now, in that state constitution, our right to vote is stated much stronger than our U.S. Constitution. Again, that's going back to the well, I would call it stronger. I, I think the According position According to of, our Supreme uh, Court, I, they ruled it as a stronger tenet than the U.S. Constitution. I wouldn't agree that it's stronger. I think it is the wrong direction. I think it says, uh, uh, it, it takes the unreasonable argument that any burden upon the voter imposed by government in voting, and we have voting locations, and you have to go there, and you know you have, you have to do things. There's always economic cost to everything you do. They said because there's any economic cost, it's a burden that's unsupported by our Constitution. I, I think it's a bad decision, but it's easily fixed if we just because we should just you know, let the voters go change the Constitution. It's not, just, it's not just, don't you respect our voters to make the right decision? I state? respect our Constitution. I respect our More judiciary. than the voters, huh? I didn't say I didn't okay. put a value on this. But the question I want to ask you, too, you keep going back to the cost of voting um, in terms of you know public transportation. And I, I want to strongly disagree with you because from the state Supreme Court, they were talking about and in their decision, well, you have the documents and things. That's what I'm they were about. talking about the underlying documents that would now be required if the bill is becomes law. Absolutely. The documents required, and again, as you noticed yesterday, the law did not, or the bill did not allow for the state to cover those costs. So we're not talking about transportation here. We're talking about the documents that would now be required to get a state issued by photo ID. I don't know what your question is, but it is true. The Winecheck decision deals with the cost. They believe caused by the statute, which was approved in 2006, which might cause you to, to have to go get a birth certificate in order to prove who you are to get the photo identification. So right now, that's do you think clear. that's that's a that's May clear. issue that people may have to go get those documents to get their state issued photo ID? Do you not know those regulations? Well, what I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, acquiring one. I have one already, so I didn't have to get when I got my photo ID. I already had one. You have to have it. That is correct. I'm saying they were talking about the cost of going to, to pay the government to re right. kind of Are you, do you um, have, and do you believe that the people right now who do not have a state issued photo ID, you know, you've heard those numbers, it doesn't matter what that number the is. The number is ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. We know well, there are people that do not have. The worthy of pointing out. But we do know that. The way they calculate the numbers. Yeah, they calculate these numbers. I, it doesn't matter what the number is, Representative. Well, well, it doesn't matter. Okay, well, let's do reject you, those numbers. Do you agree that there are registered voters right now who do not have a state issued photo identification? No doubt about it. There are registered voters right now who do not have a state issued voter ID. No doubt about it. And I don't know how many. What would they are, have to do are, to get? There are not 200,000. It doesn't matter the number. Well, that's good. When we're I'm talking about. It doesn't matter to you. I, it matter it, to, it should it matter to anyone. Matter, it does matter to me. Because this bill, because it's a your constitutional amendment representative, could affect one vote. And it doesn't matter if it's 200, 250,000, doesn't matter. The, Four million the, the in, bill, in North the Carolina, bill, it does the bill not filed, matter. The bill filed in this committee that but now we're talking ago. about your amendment. Oh, you don't want to talk about that because it gives you the protection that you are asking for. You're worried about being disenfranchised. That bill is a common sense and it deals with those issues so no one will be disenfranchised. You have to talk about them together. The constitutional amendment does not is not a does not cre create the uh, statutory framework. It simply allows the uh, General Assembly to adopt the bill. It allows changing, if, if it, this is passed by the voters, Correct. Correct. it would change our Constitution, which again, we right now, the reason we have to change our Constitution is because the Supreme Court said we can't do this according to our Constitution. But if that changing that Constitution would affect one person's vote, one person now who has been voting legally with no problem, 
because they found no fraud in the state. So you still believe that we should allow the voters to come back and take someone else's right away that has done nothing wrong? Okay. We, we, we constantly balance rights. And, and there is a right that we all have that our vote counts fully. And that, and that the cheats who steal our elections have not anyone be anyone stolen an election in Missouri that all has been time, found all fraudulently? Time, all the time. We've had stolen elections. We have a history of, of a lot of cheating. I don't know how many elections actually have been stolen. I'm sure there's been a few. But there, we have a history of cheating in the state. And so you feel, you know, that cheating that. has never been prosecuted. It's been prosecuted. We have not been found one person. But cheating hasn't been prosecuted. When it has on a number of occasions. Okay, we we have went 15 minutes. So, well, um, Representative, I just would like to close out okay. just just a, a, a final statement. I um, I, I'm hearing you saying that even one taking away one person's ability to vote who has been long time voting because of your belief that there are cheating somewhere in the state in terms of uh, in terms of elections, and I I feel that we have to be extremely conscious here because we are, this is not just about a bill any longer. This is about altering our original state constitution by allowing the voters to do that. And you know full well that if we allow the voters to decide any other rights, um, we women and my partner right here would not be sitting here today. Do we, have we would a, allow the is, voters to you, decide people's yeah. rights and that's what your bill would be taking away. Thank well, you very I much. I certainly vehemently disagree with you. Okay. What it will do is protect people's rights and their right to be counted when they vote. Mr. Gomes. Very quick question, please. Mm -hmm. So of the 18 states that have some sort of uh, voter ID requirement, and you've been working on this, let's say, seven years, have you ever run across a person who was voting legally and the bills in those states then kept them from voting legally? Were they onerous to that point? Have you no, ever run across no I have not. And there have been lots of cases, especially in Colorado, of people who illegally voted since uh, in, in 2010, um, where they did not have this requirement. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? Mr. Dunn. It's a comment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I'm not, not going to ask a question. I think we both understand sort of where we stand on this issue, and I don't think anything I say is going to change your mind or probably anyone's mind on this committee. Um, but when we are dealing with changing our Constitution, that is something to be taken very seriously. Uh, as Representative Newman said, this has never been done as it relates to vote rights in Missouri. We have one of the strongest constitutions in our union when it relates to voter rights. And I think to begin to chip away at that is the wrong thing to do. Um, and I'll just reiterate my statements that I made yesterday as it relates to this. I think we are attempting to fix a problem that does not exist. We have heard time and time again from you as well as other representatives and members and individuals who have come to testify before this committee that there have been no known instances of voter ID fraud in the state of Missouri. And that is the only thing that a uh, voter ID law would address. It would not deal with or address uh, voter registration fraud. It would deal with voter ID or uh, impersonation fraud. And this bill would do nothing to alleviate those other issues uh, that we're having. And so I think when we are talking about uh, changing our constitution for a problem that does not exist, that is absolutely the wrong thing to do. And again, I'll repeat what I said on yesterday. I believe that this is a politically motivated attempt to strip away the fundamental rights of individuals to be able to exercise their right to vote. And I think um, also this is an attempt to be able to sway elections for one party over another by stripping away those rights. And I just wanted to say I'm really that. glad you brought and, that up. And I'll, because and, it does, and I'll it finish does. my comment. I'll finish my comment by just saying Again, I'm going to vote no on this, mm -hmm. and I'm going to vote no on House Bill 1073, and I'll vote no on any other bill that attempts to take away the rights of individuals. And, and so you should, if this was a bill like that. Uh, I'm really glad you brought it up, because uh, there is a misunderstanding. There is no such thing, there is no crime in Missouri, there is no such thing as impersonation fraud. There is vote fraud, and ultimately all vote fraud, registration fraud, 
uh, false registration, dead people registering, which is really kind of in some parts of the state is a kind of part of our history, is all part and parcel of one thing, being counted on election day. It is the it is the, the the result of that is to have a vote cast for a particular candidate those those wrongdoers their candidate uh, and to prove who you are on election day is a protection from the fraud which is clearly evident I I don't question your sincerity I don't question that this is a very divisive issue but I am telling you there is no evidence at all that it has uh, adversely affected any voters, any lawful voters in this country by having a reasonable photo identification requirement. Thank you. All right, any other? Oh, Mr. Kopmar. Quick inquiry. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Representative. Hello there. Thank you for bringing this bill. Um, I asked Representative Duggar yesterday the question about rights and whether voting was a right, a constitutional right. And uh, then I also asked the question if, if owning a gun is, is a right. And do you feel like it should, you should, we should have the same identification process to vote as we do to own a gun? And what, what we go through to purchase a gun? I think it's at least an interesting point that you make because, you know, all of the rights that we have uh, are, are, are needed and are, are reasonably interpreted uh, uh, and, and are not absolutes. We don't have any absolute right to do anything. And so our right to vote, certainly under the U.S. Supreme Court decision, uh, is, is, I guess you could say limited, but I wouldn't even say that. I would say you have to prove who you are if the state so chooses who you are to vote. And, and that is a reasonable restriction upon the right to vote. If you don't have that, anyone who's not registered, anyone, you know, registration is certainly lawful. You don't have to prove who you are. There's no protection to the to the process. And and certainly voting is the one of the most, maybe the most fundamental right that we have as citizens. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Newman. Uh, just representing, I wanted to follow up there on your analogy between purchasing a weapon. Um, right now, you do not have to show anything. Um, in certain venues to purchase a weapon. You don't have to prove who you are. Have you purchased a weapon lately, ma'am? Well, ma'am, I do know about background checks and what our state requires. And do you, should we have the same background check to vote and, and get on the voter rolls well, uh, to uh, register to vote um, as we do to Since we uh, don't have universal background checks for all firearm sales, I don't know how you would relate a background check to actually to, okay. to vote. Um, we need to give more time to our audience to ask their questions of the bill handler today. So, moving. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here uh, to testify in favor of the bill? Okay, please, please keep your comments um, to a couple of minutes at the most. And I apologize for that, but we're just on a limited time today. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Philip Todd. I'm a uh, resident of the 49th District of, uh, of Missouri, uh, Callaway County. I'm here to speak in uh, favor of uh, HDR 47. I think we established that our uh, right to vote is a constitutional right, but I think we need to go a little bit further. My vote, I, I consider it to be a property right. That is intellectual property that nobody can take away from me except myself. But when somebody else would vote that's not qualified or not legally voting, they are stealing from me. They are stealing my property. They're taking my property rights. Our Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution says that we have the right to be secure in our personal effects as well as uh, other property, and I consider personal effects to be my vote. We're also covered by the Missouri Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, that says that it's the duty of government to protect our right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the enjoyment of gains of our particular industry, of which I consider my election, my vote, to be very important in maintaining the gains of my personal industry. Whether or not I agree with the outcome of a vote is not the issue here. 
What I want to do is make sure that that vote is absolutely fair and uncontested. And I believe that that's my fundamental right to be established, that we do not allow my property, my vote, my intellectual property be, be stolen by people who are intentionally trying to uh, vote without the right to do so. I right. uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Do not forget to fill out a form. Yes. And is there any questions of the witness? Okay, thank you, sir. Any other <coughs> persons here to, to speak in favor of the bill? Yes, sir. My name is Todd Isaac Skelton. I am a uh, citizen of McLean County. And a lot of people talk about fair elections. Um, I would, fair is, can be subjective. I believe honest is a very solid word. And I would like to see honest elections. Um, I believe that they are the cornerstone of our constitutional republic. We are not a democracy. Uh, we are a constitutional republic. People have the authority to vote here because they are citizens of this country and those are properly registered in those particular wards or communities or what have you or states. And I believe that it's absolutely paramount that we ensure that the individuals that are voting do have the legal right to vote in our elections. When I worked for the Missouri Department of, uh, uh, Missouri Department of Social Services, I worked in uh, Family Services in St. Louis, and I also worked in Child Support Enforcement. <laughs> Unless the rules have changed, and I remember correctly, you had to have a photo ID to receive any of those types of benefits. You could get food stamps on an emergency service right away, but to get full services, you had to have photo ID. I believe that the argument that uh, certain people will not be able to get one is uh, erroneous. And I also believe that if an individual is a, is a registered voter now and wants to continue to register after this constitutional amendment would be passed, it would be very easy for them to go and get a uh, photo ID. Uh, it's not going to be an additional burden or cost. And uh, I ask that you support HJR 47 and let the people of the state of Missouri speak. All right. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Questions of this witness? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Filled out form. All right. Is there anyone here to speak against the bill? I think he beat you up. Morning, or afternoon, Good sorry. Afternoon. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, John Scott from the Secretary of State's office. Two minutes. Okay. You got it. Okay. Um, and I think I filled out a witness form yesterday. You did. So um, just you know, the 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 HJR and the bill we all know go hand in hand. Um, here to testify against the HJR, uh, same reasons that we testified against the bill yesterday. Um, like I said, the Secretary of State takes his responsibility as the chief elections official very seriously, uh, wants to make sure that all, uh, that only eligible voters vote, but also that el every eligible voter in the state of Missouri has the opportunity to vote. Um, so I think it's important to sort of really take a second and think of what we're doing here. We're taking a very strong constitutional fundamental right to vote, and we are amending our Constitution to weaken it, to allow us to pass the most restrictive form of photo identification law in the country. Really let that sink in for a second. The Supreme Court has spoken on this. I, I, I don't know what else I can say. The information's been out there. Similar laws around the country have been struck down for similar reasons. We saw it last month in Pennsylvania. Um, in response to Representative Gosen's request for folks around the country who have been shown to not be able to, to obtain identification, who have been uh, affected by the law, that's not what our Supreme Court said. Our Supreme Court didn't say, hey, if, if this turns out to affect somebody, uh, negatively, then, then we'll have to strike it down. No, they said the, the burden itself in the first place is too great. Um, we obviously respect the, the constitutional process and the structure of government and, and the representative's right to uh, attempt to change the Constitution. It's our belief that it is the wrong thing to do, that the legislation is extreme, it's unfair, it's by definition and by admission unconstitutional, and that it's wrong. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Mr. Mann. 
Yeah, uh, for, uh, um, I mean, it, it's okay to amend the Constitution or more. Well, I mean, that's something we have the ability to do, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I guess my thing is here is that, I mean, I know we talk about these bills being hand in hand, but I really see two completely separate things. Because, you know, at the if if we would change the Constitution in this manner, and saying may, I mean, they're not saying. I mean, I mean, we this the, the bill could still get, you know, vetoed, not overridden, et cetera, kind of a thing. Okay, it's a may. I mean, the voters are saying, you know, we want to allow the possibility to do this. Um, and I, I guess this this I love it how everybody loves to pick and choose what they want to be allowed the voters to vote on, kind of a thing. I guess it's just it's interesting. It's, it's usually a convenience kind of thing. And so I guess for you, I mean, from the Secretary of State's point of view, I guess I, I don't mind you saying you're against the bill. I mean, there, you might have some valid reasons there. I get that. The HJR, I think, is disingenuous in a lot of ways, and I, I don't appreciate it, quite frankly, because I think that's it's just it's putting a may in the Constitution. It's not saying a shall, must, whatever. It's may. And, I mean, and because, I don't know. So it's just, it just hits me wrong kind of thing. I don't have a question necessarily, or maybe you can respond if you want kind of thing, but I just think it's, it's, it's a... Um, it doesn't show well, I think, in my opinion, from the Secretary's office to, 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 to treat, treat them equally, I guess. And I'm, I mean, to me, I think it's fair to the left voters, you know, just give the option. Kind of thing. Cause they, they still vote in people that don't want to do it, kind of a thing. They, I mean, we can put in a law, and who knows, three years from now, legislators come back and say, no, we don't want that anymore, and say we take it out, kind of a thing. So that, that's, the, that's the voters' assignment. There. So anyway, comment, not necessarily a question, but I wanted to state that. Thanks. Any other questions, Mr. Weber? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Scott, uh, so Secretary Kander has uh, created an elections integrity unit, hasn't he? That's right. And what what kind of what kind of thing? What is that? Just give me a brief summary. What's that going to do? Sure. So the idea is that uh, we wanted to create within our office a, a formal process for the first time to sort of receive and examine and funnel complaints uh, about irregularities uh, regarding elections uh, throughout the state. Uh, it's just evidence of how we take you know, complaints or accusations of voter fraud very, very seriously. Um, you can go to our website right now, um, upload a complaint, review complaints that have already been um, looked at, examined, referred to prosecutors. Uh, everything gets a written response and everything gets looked at and taken very seriously. One other thing that we're trying to do is push for tougher uh, penalties for violations of class one elections offenses. Uh, we want to take voter registration fraud from a penalty of up to seven years to a class B felony and up to 15 years in prison. No more SIS, 30 days shock time. Let's put people in jail who break our election laws. That's so, what we're talking about. And doing that wouldn't, wouldn't uh, discourage or, or suppress anybody who is legally trying to vote. That's the sort of the, the beauty of what we're trying to do, which is it's cracking down on people who choose to violate or attempt to violate our elections laws without disenfranchising people. There's plenty of ways to do that, and that's what we're trying to look so at. So it seems to me that we could increase penalties. Uh, we could fully fund uh, Secretary Kander's Election Integrity Unit, and we can, by doing that, we can crack down any perceived election fraud without endangering the right of anybody to vote. In, in a way that's far more effective than this photo ID. Exactly, and I'd be happy to work with anybody. Uh, you know, in fact, Representative Cox, we should talk about putting these provisions into the criminal code reform bill. I've been talking to the Senate about it, and that's something that we're very serious about. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that you guys are the first ones to do this. I'm glad to see that you're uh, active and that you're making it accessible so that anybody does have any election-related complaints, they know they know exactly where to go. Um, I hope that we fully fund this 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 unit, uh, election integrity unit, and I think that's a great alternative um, to ensuring the integrity of Missouri's elections without doing something to make it more uh, onerous on non voters and then discourage people from voting. Because we need as many people voting as we need more people voting rather than less. And so I'm, I'm pleased to see those in these. Please keep us updated on, on the, the great strategy you've been doing on this issue. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Ms. Bennett. To acquire Madam Chair. Yes. Um, just very very quickly, since I know we're on a time constraint. Uh, has your office received any um, complaints that you know of, um, you know, since you've been in office, since the secretary's been in office, of any voter impersonation fraud? No, ma'am. And so when we're talking about your unit, you know, we're talking about all instances of fraud, but for the sake of, of you know, this bill and this constitutional amendment, you know, um, 
since we haven't had any, uh, do you know of any previous instances of any of actual complaints that have reached your office in terms of voter impersonation fraud? No reporting of, of voter impersonation fraud. Um, anything you know, either the Attorney General's office, anything just reported to anywhere in the state? Nothing I'm aware of. So again, I mean, I applaud you for you know the unit to even you know start to address if there is any complaints that do come to your office. But again, you kind of clarified that registration fraud, any other type of fraud that might be out there, your obviously new unit would be addressing. But impersonation fraud just hasn't ever seen it. Correct? No, ma'am. Thank you. And, and I think it's really important to to think about that all the things that we can do and all the opportunities that we have before we start taking away what our Supreme Court has said to be a fundamental right. Um, I, I think we just really need to think about and examine the gravity of what this body is deliberating right now. Because I think you agree with me. I mean, if we're dealing, if we need to deal with fraud, we deal with the fraud. Even right now, there's kind of like zero. Yes, but that is a whole separate issue than, again, addressing this, sort of changing our Constitution to potentially take someone's right away. And again, that's why the, the Supreme Court ruled that unconstitutional no second. <coughs> Thank okay, you for clarifying. Okay, we need to move on. Uh, anyone else have questions for this witness? Mr. Gosen. To inquire, please. Yes, sir. So I, I was thinking about every possible way any industry, whether it's banking, whether highway patrol, anyone catches impersonation fraud. And in every case, whether through fingerprinting, photo ID, that is the only way you can catch impersonation fraud. So I would ask the Secretary of State's office, as part of your bill, determine how will you catch impersonation fraud if, it's a, if it exists. There have been at least 10 cases countrywide I know of that were caught. So it, it does exist. Now, we don't check any sort of identification as far as a photo ID. I mean, how would a, a poll worker catch somebody that was impersonating somebody else? Well, I guess if someone's already voted and you come in and say, I'm this person. First off, I think it's important to consider how tough it is to commit voter impersonation fraud. You would have to know that the person, uh, where their polling place was, that they hadn't already voted um, and go in there. And it, it's not as easy as we sort of make it sound. Um, it, it, so it, be happy to talk about ways to catch the if there's voter impersonation fraud that is existing. Of course, we would want to prevent that. Um, that that's something that I'm happy to talk with you about. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Next. Good afternoon. Madam Chair, one of the members of the committee, uh, sponsor of the bill. My name is Crystal Williams, and I'm here representing the American Civil Liberties Union of Missouri today. Also, though, um, allow me, I'm actually channeling uh, Professor Denise Lieberman because she's not able to be here today. And believe me, I, I'm not I'm not the, uh, the intellectual giant that she is on these issues, but um, she asked me to convey in particular one one thing about this HJR that she is very concerned about. Because actually most of our concerns were adequately discussed yesterday. I think we had a pretty broad discussion. Um, you know, she, Denise and the ACLU, we're concerned because we, we object to changing the const Constitution as the resolution proposes. We don't believe we should be putting our fundamental rights up to a popular vote. The refrain of the issue, let the voters decide, that's been the refrain. But we don't let the voters decide to strip our Constitution of the rights to free speech, the rights to freedom of religion. And similarly, we should be loath to ask the voters to strip away some of the protections the courts have recognized that our Constitution contains for our right to vote. In essence, it's, it's sort of a weird argument, but we're basically asking voters to potentially go to vote to take away or curtail some voters' rights to vote. And that's something that, that on the face of it, is, is something that we just absolutely can't support. All right, thank you, ma'am. Are there any questions of this witness? Okay, thank you very much. And you like to Yes, sir. Madam Chair, members of the committee, I'll page 
on behalf of Missouri NEA, we'd also like to go on record in opposition. All of my members are work, they work for public officials, and we're very concerned about trying to improve participation and support of our governmental entities, including our school districts. We'd like to work with the committee and Representative Cox to reinstate elections for the school board members who are elected by default. On the other hand, when it comes to this question, when the Supreme Court looks at an issue and says this creates a substantial burden um, that, t that potentially uh, restricts and suppresses vote in certain sectors of our, of our state, that's a, a concern to us and a constitutional amendment designed particularly to affect that and amend that so that something can be done so that the basis on which the court will decide is somehow different and they would not be uh, essentially instructed to make a decision to protect those interests strikes us as moving in the wrong direction. I know this really quickly to speak to the you know, one possibility for an answer to Representative Gozen's question. Somebody wants to vote as me, they're going to have to come to Trinity Presbyterian Church on West Rollins Road in Columbia. They're going to have to show up before I get there, before I drop off the boys at middle school, because I'm going to be signing on that signature line, and if somebody's already signed, you know, brought, then of course my, my clerk's right here, Wendy Norman, um, the card that she sends me is going to be in my wallet, uh, and I'm going to be able to establish that, that I'm where I need to be, and there's going to be an issue. And so if that happens, you know, all over the state, people are going to say, hey, somebody just tried to vote as me. But why would it, you know, it, it really is kind of almost incredulous that someone would take the effort to do that. But there, those would be a lot of situations, millions of situations all over the state, where if that was going on, people would catch it when they vote. So from our perspective, there, there's probably a lot of opportunity to verify that when all of us vote. And so from our perspective, the, the, the fact that the court looked at this and said, we don't see that this is com really directed to a compelling state interest uh, and narrowly tailored to that concern because the court did not find strong evidence that there was that kind of fraud going on. Happy to try to answer any questions. All right, are there any questions of this witness? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Anyone else that wants to speak to this bill? Hi, I'm Wendy Norman. I'm the County Clerk of Bibb County, and I'm here on behalf of myself, not any other county clerk in the state. It's been a couple of years. Uh, I just want to clarify and address a couple of constitutional issues. One, the Marion County case, which was at the U.S. Supreme Court, which was upheld. There were several issues that were not litigated in that, number one of which is the unequal treatment of women, which I have a serious problem that this particular HJR doesn't protect women from unequal treatment under any specific ID law. You know, if you add a section in there saying no woman should have to pay more for an ID than any male, then I feel better. But as it stands now, that was not litigated in the Marion County case. Also not litigated in the Marion County case was identification from other states. The treatment of citizens born in other states under the U.S. Constitution, each state is to recognize the citizenship. Under this particular bill, if you have a driver's license from Kansas and vote in Missouri, say you work in Kansas, your employer requires you to get a commercial driver's license in Kansas. Under certain things, there's no protection under this constitutional requirement that because you were from another state or have acceptable identification from another state, you are not protected under this. So again, I see a constitutional provision should have basic protections against subsequent laws, and that's what I see missing in this. Finally, on the American County case, what the U.S. Supreme Court did was uphold the circuit decision written by Judge Richard Posner. In the last three months, Judge Posner has repudiated his uh, opinion on that and stated they were flat out wrong on it. So, All right, any yeah. questions? Please make it short. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Wendy, it's good to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're doing well and you're here today. <laughs> Glad to be here. Could you, could you go so hard, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> could you go through just briefly, and, and I understand, but I want you to explain. Um, you said it, 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 it's going to be more costly for women. Um, why, it, why is that? I, I can't, again, I totally agree. This is a may, all right? right? This is a may, and all it does is authorize things. But I believe when you have a may, you should also have protections in there. 
against discriminatory behavior that could come out of that. And I'm just bringing up that this particular thing does not have those protections in it. This is to keep legislative bodies from doing that. And so then, when you don't have those kinds of protections in the language, then the court later goes and looks to that language. Now, I would guess, you know, when I go and talk about it, and I talk to young women in particular, and say, you know, don't have one of those destination weddings and get your marriage license in the Caribbean, because, you know, it's going to be pay trying to get your driver's license changed and stuff like that. It's just, you have to understand, I believe the Constitution should have protections. I, I believe it should have protections for women, for people who are born in other states, and, those and types of that's things. That's the issue that I would, the, the, one of the major reasons that, you should write this as a man and say, sure, uh -huh. this moving in campaign of this bill, is that typically, not all the time, but typically, when women get married and they, they change their last names, it makes it more difficult for them to, to put together the paper trail to prove they are who they are. It makes it more expensive. It makes it more time consuming. Um, and so I think that's part of what you were talking about. What I'm talking about is I want to see right. people treated equally. Right. Again, this, kind of, this is a may. And I think we need to make sure that people who are covered under it are treated equally. Right. Not some people get it for five dollars. Some people have to pay two hundred dollars if it's another state or if they have to get, you know, various other decrees. And those are the protections, I think, that should go into a constitutional amendment, whatever the underlying law that could be adopted under it later. Okay, moving on. Any questions of this witness? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else to speak against the bill? Anyone out? Anyone here to speak for informational purposes only? All right. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Do you have anything to add? No. All right. This closes. <laughs> this closes the hearing on HGR 47. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we uh, will go into executive session. <laughs> and we are going to take up the bill first. I have a motion to do pass House Bill 1073. Any discussion? Mr. Conway. Uh, Madam Chair, I guess the mic isn't working. I have an amendment and I would uh, move for its adoption. Okay. Uh, it's right here. Oh, okay. He's got it right here. Uh, just briefly, Madam Chair, it's, it's the identical amendment that I offered uh, last year. Uh, it, it allows uh, for a state-approved ID to be one that it is issued by a uh, institution of higher learning, either public or private, that has a, a photograph of the individual on it, and, uh, and that's basically the amendment. I just, I just, very very to speak against it. I, I mean, it's not only public institutions; it's not actually to, uh, private institutions, and there's, there's some no control over that. And, uh, I think a state issue. They're talking about the state, but uh, even these other institutions, and private concerns. So, I speak against it. Anyone else, Mr. Governor? Yeah, just a quick comment. You know, I've got a student ID issued by a very large Missouri private institution. You know, it's no expiration date on it. I'm obviously not a student there, and that would concern me that people would be carrying these around. If anybody wants to look at it, it looks pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
before we vote on that one. <laughs> it's truly to speak in favor of it. Uh, uh, Chair, I, I know the students face um, a lot of uh, challenges when it comes to voting. And uh, we typically tend to see lower voting rates among younger people. So I think that this is a good amendment. I think that to the extent that we can remove barriers um, that prevent young people um, from voting, it's a good thing. And I think we're trying to get people involved in the democratic process and develop a positive habit of civic involvement. Uh, it should start as young as possible. So uh, I support this amendment. I think it's important. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, and they're right up there. Okay, Mr. Conway, uh, we all appreciate you bringing the amendment. At, but at this time, I think Bill Handler would um, rather maybe we do it a different, handle it a different way for a minute. Well, he can propose the amendment. We have to vote on it. So yes, okay. yes, just, just a minute, though. Oh, okay. And so at this time, I think we need to take a voice, voice vote on this amendment. So all those in favor, yes. say yes. 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 All those opposed, no. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. And again, just a long way, I appreciate your efforts. There. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh -huh. And now we will take a roll call vote on the bill. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That issue failed. That, that I apologize. Now please take a vote. <laughs> Chair, yes. Vice Chair Nett. Yes. Representative Conway. No. Cox. Aye. Dunn. No. Gosen. Aye. Hurst. Aye. Holtmeyer. Aye. McGaw. Aye. Newman. No. Bausch. Aye. And Weber. No. Eight to four. All right. Uh, the next bill that we um, have a motion to pass is HJR 47. Do we have discussion on this? On this HJR? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Cox? I have an amendment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. I think it's a little that it's nine o'clock this morning. Uh, this is an amendment to the ballot language. And what it's worth, this is the language that the people have been sent all the day. I've had a little phrase, which is the, uh, the Senate had a another version. So which that's what that which little tweak is instead of the one that's up on the well, what is it? My question is, where does it? Oh, it goes right after the word law. Shall so we after law. Okay. Read All right. Shall we read the? Let, let me, let me. Okay. Yeah, I, I can read it for everyone. Alright. So all Go ahead and read the amendment for clarity. Amend House Joint Resolution 47, pages 1 and 2, section B, lines 1 and 4. That's just section B. By removing all of that section from the bill and inserting the list of following. So, pursuant to Chapter 116, another applicable constitutional provision in the laws of this state, allowing the General Assembly to adopt ballot language for the submission of this joint resolution to the voters of the state. The official summary of this legislation shall be as follows. Shall the Constitution of Missouri be amended to state that voters may be required by law, may be subject to exception, to verify one identity, citizenship, and residence by presenting identification that may include a valid government issued photo identification? I move the adoption of the amendment. All right. And this also is a voice vote. And uh, for all those that uh, are in favor of this amendment, say yes. 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 All those that are opposed, say no. 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 The, amendment, uh, the amendment passes. And uh, now it is a roll call vote for. No, the roll is oh, in two. We've got a roll that into. 
Okay. We will uh, take the voice vote on rolling it and the top taking the top. Okay. All right. Do we have a number? Do we need a number? No. Okay. All right. Um, all right. We have a voice vote. Um, all those in favor say, excuse me, rolling, 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 rolling it into a substitute uh -huh. and to adopt it. Uh, all those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. 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 Okay. And the, um, the House, rolling that into a House committee substitute passes. So that right. Okay. Now, how about a roll call vote for HJR 7? Ms. Dan, please come roll. Chair Pentlicker? Yes. Vice Chair Neff? Yes. Representative Conway? No. Huff? Aye. Dunn? No. Ghoston? Aye. Hurst? Aye. Kolkmeyer? Aye. McGall? Aye. Newman? No. Fausch? Aye. Weather? No. And that count is eight to four. Anything else that needs to be brought before the committee? I want to thank everyone for coming today and attending. Um,